Did you know that Steam has some hidden settings and features? Like this first one where you can install a Steam game that's not on the Steam store. First, just go up to help, click on Steam support, go down to games software, go to the search bar and type in 8-bit Bayonetta. Now click on it, click on it's not in my library, and right here you'll see an install button. Go ahead and click it, and then just click install again and the game will start installing. Now there are other games you can do this with as well, but I want to make a quick disclaimer that this isn't some method to get paid games for free. These games have just been delisted from the Steam store and this is a way to still access them. If you're interested in the other games, I'll leave a link in the description to a list of them. Now the next thing I'm going to show you guys is over in the Steam library. Now in your library, obviously on the side here, you have all your games and programs. And if you go to these three lines, you can actually filter these. Now you have all your basic filters like racing, it'll show you all your racing games. But one of the cool filters is down at the bottom here under friends, you can actually type in a friend's name and when you click on it, it'll show you all the games that your friend owns that you also own. Now I find this really useful if you and your friend are trying to find a game to play together that you both already own. Now another thing in the Steam library you might not know about is Steam Collections. To get to Collections you just click on these four squares right here. Now essentially what this does is it categorizes and you can organize this side list of where all your games and programs are. So to create one you just hit create a new collection. You can name it whatever you want. I'm going to name it Racing. So there's going to be two options. You can do Create Collection or Create Dynamic Collection. Now the difference is this left one, you actually individually select what games you want in this collection. The right side will automatically do it for you. So I'm going to do Dynamic Collection. Since I named this one Racing, I'm going to go ahead and click Racing right here. And as you can see, it put all my racing games into this collection. And now the collection shows up on the side here and categorizes my racing games. Now, just like in the filters before, you can actually type in a friend's name here too. And once you select it, it will turn you and your friend's games into a collection. Now, while we're in the library, I'm gonna show you guys a few other things you can do. When you click on a game, we can actually change this background and logo of the game. All you have to do is just right click and either select set custom background or custom logo. And once you do that, it'll just open up your file explorers, select an image and it changes it. You can do this with the background as well. Now, if you wanna get rid of this, all you have to do is right click and just clear. Also in your library, when you scroll down and get these big cover arts of your game, you can also change these as well. Just right click on them, go to manage and set custom artwork. Now another thing you can do is if you're ever looking for a game's files on your computer, you can just come to your Steam library and right click on the game, go to manage and go to browse local files. And it'll automatically open up your file explorer where all the game files are. Another thing you can do in the library is if you have a game that you don't want appearing on the side here anymore, you can actually go ahead and hide it. All you have to do is right click, go to manage and hide this game. Now you won't see this game here on the side and if you ever want to for some reason unhide it or go view it again, just go to the top here and click view and then hidden games. Now it's going to show you all the games you have hidden. Now if you want to unhide one, you just right click it, go to manage and remove from hidden. Now another thing you can do is add non-Steam games to your Steam library. Just go to the top here and select games. And at the bottom you'll see add a non-Steam game to my library. When you click on it, you'll get this directory where you can select which program you want to add. So in this case I'm going to add my Opera GX browser. So just tick it and then click on add selected programs. Now on my games list on the side here, if you scroll down, here it is, Opera GX browser. Now what this does is obviously it's just in your Steam library now. You can also launch the program from Steam itself. So when I click on this, it launches my Opera GX. Now for the next thing I'm going to show you, you have to go to the top left, click on Steam, go to settings and go down to the in-game tab. Now in here, we're going to go down to in-game FPS counter. Click this drop down menu and you can select where you want it to be on screen. So once you have this selected, now any Steam game you play, you'll always have an FPS counter wherever you selected it to be. Another thing you can do in the same settings is if you scroll down, you can actually take in-game screenshots through Steam. So to take a screenshot, it's defaulted as the F12 key. So when you're in game, all you have to do is just hit F12 and it'll take a screenshot. Now you can change this key to whatever you want it to be, but I'm going to leave it. Now to see these screenshots after you take them, at the bottom here, it'll show you where these screenshots are actually located. If you want to change the folder, just click on change folder and select the directory where you want them to go. Another place you can quickly view your screenshots is at the top here if you click on view and go down to screenshots. Now also in the settings, go up to interface and over here you'll see startup location. 
On the side here, you'll notice a drop down menu and you can select what you want your startup screen to be when you launch Steam. So right now when I launch Steam, my default is the storefront. Now, if you want this to be different, just come to this drop down menu and select whatever you want. So if I click on friend activity and then restart Steam, it will automatically bring me to my friend's activity. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you, if you go up to help and then click on system information, this little window is going to pop up. Now, what this is going to do is literally tell you pretty much everything you need to know about your computer. It tells you all your processor information, your graphics card information. It even tells you if your game controller is detected or not when it's plugged in. If you want to nerd out a little bit more, you can even click on this compare your hardware button. And it'll bring you to the Steam hardware survey that kind of just shows you what the general community uses. Now this next thing I'm going to show you is going to allow you to download the image of a trading card. So all you got to do is click on a game, scroll down till you see the trading cards on the side here and all you're going to do is click it. Now you can just right click and save the screenshot as. This is pretty cool because some of this art is actually really nice and some of them are pretty dope to set as your desktop wallpaper. Now this next thing makes your Steam way more minimalistic. All you got to do is go to view and then click on small mode and it's going to make Steam just this tiny little window. And if you're using this and you want it to go back to normal, just go to the top here, click on view and go back to large mode. Now these next couple things are under the view tab at the top here. Go down till you see players and click on it. Now what this is going to do is bring up a little window that shows you all the recent players you played with. Now a quick note, this only works with certain games that support this feature. And as you can see here, I don't play a lot of games that do support it. But if you do and you ran into someone that you wanted to add, you can come here to check if you can find them. Now the other thing under view is game servers. When you click on this, a window will pop up. And this is just a quick way of seeing if game servers are dead or not without having to launch the game to see if there's any players. So for example, I can click this drop down menu and select a game like 7 Days to Die, hit this search, and it will show me all the current servers on 7 Days to Die with their players, the latency, all that good stuff. You can also select one of them and hit connect and it'll actually launch your game and load you into whichever server you clicked on. Now this next thing I'm going to show you actually allows you to get the developer console on Steam. To do this, go to the search bar and type in run. Now you're going to type in this exact thing, then hit OK. And once it launches, now you can see there's this console tab here, which will bring you to the developer console. I'm not really going to go into this as it is quite advanced, but just for an example, there's a whole bunch of commands you can do. Like for example, if I type in user underscore friends and hit enter, it's going to give me a list of all the friends I've ever had on Steam. And like I said, that's just one of the simple commands. There's tons more, but if this interests you, you can go ahead and look into that yourself. Now, just a quick little bonus tip I want to mention, which most people probably knew, but if you didn't, you can actually refund Steam games. To do this, all you got to do is go to help at the top, click on Steam support, go to games and software. Now search up the game you're looking to refund, or if it's here, you can just click on it. Now it'll ask you what problem you're having. In this case, I'll just say I purchased this by accident. I'd like to request a refund. You can choose your refund method like my Steam wallet. Then you can change your reason if you want here and add some notes if you want. Then when you're done, you can just hit submit request and it usually gets refunded. Now keep in mind, this won't always work. The requirements are it has to be within two weeks of purchase and has to have less than two hours of play time to be able to return it. That is gonna be all I have for you guys today. If there's any other tips or features you wanna share, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, peace.